<laughs> I'm loving ITF this year. We are meeting many of the executives of Optica Corporate members. I'm here with Theo Mareskos, the Chief Product Officer and Founder of Optica Corporate member, Swave. Theo, what is Swave? Uh, so Swave is a spinner from iMac, and uh, what we're doing is a chipset for holographic displays, uh, true holographic displays. They're the kind of things you know, that, that you've, you've, you know, you've been seen only in the sci-fi movies. So today we can already provide chief holographic displays. What is the current state of the art? Yeah, so I, what we're doing here is using um, you know, standard CMOS technology on 300 millimeter wafers. So that's really the most scalable um, kind of uh, you know, technology you're having. And the secret sauce is that we are, we're processing phase change materials on top of it. These are the same phase change materials that were used into, um, or are used into memory uh, devices, but also the kind of that, that you were knowing from you know, uh, rewritable DVDs. That's what made the rewritable DVD rewritable. So remember, you know, we could change the state of the material there to encode uh, zeros and ones. And that's exactly what we do. Yeah. Um, the secret of it is that you can scale that uh, to sub wavelengths, uh, um, you know, scale. So this is like more than 100 times smaller than any kind of pixel. Um, now, this has two properties. Property number one, you can make extremely dense displays that you can put, for instance, into kind of a near, near, near eye applications. The other one is that it's functioning in a diffractive optics regime, right? So you can encode true holograms. So what we're showing here yeah. is um, basically um, our display technology. We also have the compute companion chip to compute real-time holograms. So here we have uh, basically a piece of silicon mm -hmm. that has our phase change materials um, and has um, hologram encoded. And we're lighting it up with uh, laser light. This is just an expanded beam of laser light, yeah. right? And um, if you're observing here, if you go basically close to the chip, you can look inside and um, actually see an, an, an actual hologram. Um, what we're showing in this one as well is that we have an extremely wide field of view. So there's another object that is sort of, you know, at this, at this, this kind of angle. Um, so yeah, I mean, holography allows you to do um, many things that are extremely important for applications like uh, augmented reality glasses and head-up displays. Uh, one of the critical things is that it's able to project images uh, at the correct depth, yeah. right? And we can dynamically move that, that depth around. Um, another consequence of it is that it's natively compatible with prescription glasses, right? Yes. The lens corrects the reality for your prescription and then we computationally correct for the virtual image that we're displaying on, on, on top of that. Interacting with uh, companies who are manufacturing glasses, is it easy from a startup point of view? How does the supply chain look like to reach those, those companies who manufacture glasses? Well, I mean, what, what, what we're doing is developing the chip technology and also like, you know, the, the components, light engines, et cetera. Um, the industry today is super excited about that domain. I mean, it's, it's, it's very clear that um, AR glasses are sort of the the next frontier in um, um, AI, right? I mean, every, we're all going to have our, our AI assistants, um, and really this is putting the user interface onto the AI side. Um, one thing that is not necessarily super obvious, but it's extremely important, yeah. is that you have to be able to display the images at the correct depth. Correct. Otherwise, it's not super useful, hmm. right? So to give you an example, like if I'm having a navigation scenario, I'm walking down the street, I'm looking far away, right? Mm -hmm. So I need to display my, my user interface far away. Uh, if I get a message, I want to have it within reading distance. Yeah. If I have an AI assistant, right, who's sort of pointing things at me, I need to understand where, where in depth these things are, 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 are residing. You're working with a 300 millimeter CMOS platform of iMac, and you are customizing it a little, well, quite a lot with your polymer. How does it work when you want to scale up to other foundries? How is the relationship between this platform and the ones provided to a maybe larger scale? Platforms. Right. So basically, uh, I mean, we use iMac to prototype the, the early prototypes, uh, but we have uh, commercial uh, relationships with a, with a commercial foundry. We are here at the iMac Expand. Yes. Well, what is your relationship with iMac Expand? You are in their portfolio. How does it work being in their portfolio? 
Yeah, I'm super excited about that. So um, iMac Expand is the investment arm independent of iMac, but investing into iMac technologies. Uh, so we've been very, very lucky to have uh, Expand behind us from the very beginning um, with a lot of support. I mean, of course, capital, but also a, a lot of a lot of, of know-how and, and, and networking. Sway Photonics is a company that is developing the world's first holographic display chips. The human vision system expects things to behave in a certain way. And when you have virtual reality and augmented reality, they try to mimic the human vision system and many times they fail. The world has evolved over the past couple decades. We've become much more connected. But being able to have that information in a way that you know is usable and not just you know, two-dimensional, not just you know, on your laptop, you know, not just you know, stuck in your pocket in your phone. The future and how people communicate is in three dimensions. We're making that prospect come to life and doing it now as opposed to you know, 10 or 20 years from now that a lot of experts thought it would take. Swave has developed this breakthrough for photonics using standard CMOS semiconductor technology and will soon be introducing the world's first spatial light modulator to make dynamic holographs come to life, not only to make augmented reality and virtual reality solutions much better, but eliminate the need for glasses and goggles entirely. And we think this is going to have a huge impact on how we live, work, and play. This is the best job in the world, being able to work with the most talented, energetic people that I know and bringing technologies that we know will exist, but up till now, the technology hasn't you know, been available to make it happen. And bringing that to life, there's no better job. What is your preferred future? We had this interview in 2028. What kind of things would you like to tell me? Oh, that's an, that's an awesome one. Um, <laughs> I think in 2028, um, I would like maybe that we're having a conversation, each in our own language. My native language is French. Uh, I don't know what. Mine is Spanish. Your, yours is Spanish. So I, I would suggest that you know maybe we, we speak, you know, um, to each other in our own language and have automatic, you know, captioning, um, you know, through our personal AI assistants that is displayed at the correct at the correct depth. How can we accelerate that? How can we can make this happen sooner, what would you like for the rest of the partners in this meeting to do to accelerate that? As a whole, uh, well, I think I think we're actually on, on a pretty pretty fast path. So for us, 2024 is the year of proof of concept. Uh, we're going to industrialization in, in 25, and you know we'll be having volumes out of out of 26. Um, so I think as an ecosystem, um, maybe starting to focusing more on diffractive displays and how to build diffractive displays um, in, in general as, as as an industry would would be very 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 helpful. One of the key companies in the ecosystem on holographic photonics already showing 300 millimeter manufacturing capability on a CMOS yes. line. And, and what we're showing also today was color, right? So that's that's basically the big the big announcement of today. Uh, we have processed color filters on top of the wafers, um, and we can show spatial full color, and it's gorgeous. But you have to see it with your own eye. You will read in the news all over, but remember you had the chance to hear it first time here at the Optica LinkedIn channel. Theo, thank you very much thank you, and thank congratulations you, thank you. on everything that you are achieving. Thank you. Lovely, thank you. Amazing.